Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank God for the opportunity that God gives us. It's another moment of reflection on God's word, and we appreciate him for his kindness, for his love, for his care, for his provisions, for his protection, his favor resting upon us, that we're able to live to see another day, that we're able to live another, to see another moment. And so we continue with our finding God, who is our life. And Jesus makes a proclamation and says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody comes to the Father except through me. And so we take that as our, for our advantage and so that we keep seeking him, finding him, and so that actually that is life for us. And so, Father God in heaven, we thank you that you give us opportunity to interact with your word. We pray that as we think about this personality in the Bible, speak to us and so that we can continue with our journey in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so, friends, we come this time with uh, the personality, the man Joshua in the Bible. And of course, actually, when you talk about Joshua, people know lots about him. But now that we share about him again, we are going to have a few insights about him that can help us do our journey while we are still able here on earth. Joshua was one of those privileged young men that came to the limelight during the time of Moses. Of course, actually, when the Israelites uh, moved from Egypt to the Promised Land, and the Bible talks about Joshua very a man that came to the limelight, came into leadership, and eventually the one that led the Israelites into the promised land. Now, the meaning of the name Joshua, that actually uh, gives a lot of significance to everything that is around him, is that Joshua, Yeshua, means the Lord saves, means Yahweh saves. And so Yeshua comes onto the scene and does many, many things that depict, that show God's love, that show God's salvation. Remember, along the way, there were wars that were fought. Remember, along the way, there were very many things that happened. But Yahweh, God, the Lord, was ever and ever with the people, saving them from hostile nations that they encountered, famine that they encountered, diseases that they encountered, and so many things that God was ever, ever saving them. And so Yeshua, the Lord saves. And so for us, even today who read about this, know that the Lord is our savior. And so the Lord saves. And so every name in Hebrew that we read about in the, in the Bible has a meaning that it delivers to us. So this time we talk about this Yeshua man, Moses' assistant. He came and he started his work slowly but surely. And then eventually Moses handed over to him and so from the scriptures that we read, actually, he was observing very keenly. And in the book of Exodus, chapter 24, verse 13, the Bible has this to say, that so Moses rose with his assistant, Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute, let him go to them. Listen, Joshua, Moses' assistant, you see, he comes into the limelight and ever with Moses. He knew what awaits him ahead. And so Moses 
here mentions that actually the Bible says that actually he went up the hill, the mountain, of course, into the presence of God. And so he kept watching Moses Kinley as an assistant to him and learning how uh, the interactions were, how he communicated with God, how whatever he was doing as the leader that led them from Egypt and now along the way. And so this goes to all of us. Of course, actually, many of us who are in assistant positions, whatever we are. I thought that actually this communicates because actually he was always observing and keenly looking at what Moses was doing, preparatory for him. And so Yeshua, Joshua, gives us a very keen meaning in our dealings with those that are above us. And learning, learning humbly, of course, with humility from them. And so that actually when you take over, you're able to do what is required of you as a leader. And so Joshua, for me, um, of course, there could be very many things that we learn from him. But one of them is him keenly learning from his master, keenly learning from the one that was leading him at the moment. And so um, here Moses says we are going up to the mountain of God with him and until we return. And so for me, this shows that actually Joshua was at one accord with his master. And so it's an appeal to all of us. And of course, actually many of us are in assistant positions, whether in the church or in, you know, in other spheres of influence that we need to work closely and keenly and cooperating well with those that are leading ahead of us. Because time comes, responsibility falls on you. And so you take it up. Joshua did. Took it up because actually he picked it from his um, predecessor, who was Moses. And I learn lots and we learn lots from him. And the reason why he has very keen, very key uh, leadership qualities that he portrays to us. And one of them is this one. And so, and you also remember that because he was so keenly following the instructions and because he was so keenly, you know, in it, the Bible mentions about the people that started from Egypt into the promised land. The Bible does mention that actually many of the Israelites that started from Egypt died in the wilderness. And it was actually him, Mo Joshua, one of those that started from Egypt and reached Canaan. I admire that, that he started and completed the journey. And of course, he was one of the 12 spies, trusted men, that actually he was, he went to spy the promised land. We have shared about the prostitute, Rahab. And he was one of those that were hidden in the prostitute's house, in Rahab's house. And he remained faithful. And when they came back, Joshua, one other lesson that we pick from him is actually he silenced pessimism. He dealt with impatience. He dealt with, of course, when the spies came back, many of them came with negative report to give and say, look, the land is good, flowing with milk and honey. But the men that are in there, that we look like grasshoppers, Actually they, actually, they despised themselves. But Joshua was one of those with another one, Caleb. And we have shared about Caleb. They stood their ground, dealing with pessimism, dealing, dealing with negativity. And they said, no, we are wearable. And when you read the book of Numbers, this comes out very, very clearly. And so, friends, during our time, we need men and women. We need God's children who are like Joshua, standing out. You see, when he came back, it almost, they almost blew themselves off because of the negative report that actually the others brought. But him, Joshua, the Lord saves, stood his ground, and Caleb. And so, friends, what are we saying? We are saying that one of the things that we need to learn from these biblical figures, well, there are some negative things that were done by many of them. And from the negative, we learn that how do we move? But also from the positive, we also learn how do we go about our life? So Joshua, 
depicts something here from the spy report that I'm talking about now. He defeated pessimism. And a pessimist is someone who is a negative thinker. And he remained optimistic. He remained positive in the situation where they were. And indeed, they conquered. And remember, him and Caleb were able to go through. And they started from Egypt and entered Canaan. And so in our generation, you may be in an, in an organization, you may be in the church, you may be in the, even in the family, even in a nation, wherever you are. But there are people who are always propagating negativity among others. But Joshua gives us a lesson that he remained positive, positive in whichever situation that you were. And they could see light at the end of the tunnel. And so, friends, we learn that, yes, we can be hurt. Yes, we can be pressed hard. Yes, we can be, many things can happen, but Joshua comes out very, very keenly. And so we are talking about the Moses' assistant when he was still alive, and we are talking about an assistant that took over because he had picked the skills, he had proven himself, and he became the leader eventually to lead the children of Israel into the promised land. He delivered them there. The reason why his name suggests that. And so it is important to remember that, that actually there are lessons that we pick from here. So Joshua was a chosen replacement already earlier. And as we read from the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 27, verse Numbers 27, 18, there's something that we gather from there about Joshua. And so the Lord mention something and we, we begin from verse 12 of, and go down but let's see it verse 18 so the lord said to moses take joshua the son of nun a priest and all the congregation and lay hands on him lay hands on him this is where the issue of laying on hands comes lay hands on him take make him stand before eliezer the priest and all the congregation, and you shall commission him in their sight. So this is where the commissioning of Joshua comes and the instruction of God. Take Joshua, son of Nun. And so we are talking about leadership that comes from God. Leadership that comes from above. Not scrambling, not struggling, not fighting, but God is favor resting upon Joshua. We have had challenges in the church we have had challenges everywhere about leadership. And some people want to become leaders by their own making. But for the church particularly, in our arena, God's choice remains God's choice. And so we pick from here that actually God gives Moses instructions to pick Joshua and lay hands on him in the sight of all people. And so we appreciate something about Joshua giving us the yardstick, especially in, in the church, uh, where things have to be done according to God's chosen will. That someone who becomes a leader is a chosen replacement of whatever it is. So for me as a person and you who um, looks at these things, need to learn a lesson that a church or rather religious way of doing things, God's hand being in it, the success at the end. The reason why Joshua succeeded, Joshua moved on and he did well. And so we read lots about Joshua's life. We read lots about Joshua's um, way of leadership and he leaves lots of things for us. And you can read something more from Deuteronomy chapter 31. Before we go to the book of Joshua itself, we're going to remember people quote Joshua chapter 1 when God was talking to Joshua um, no, be strong be courageous, haven't I commanded you to be courageous, chapter 1 verse 6 following, following, but it all starts far, far behind in the books of Numbers, even Exodus we have read Numbers and then uh, Deuteronomy um, from chapter 31 verse 1 to 8 God commissioning uh, Joshua getting commissioned for the leadership and so there are lots of things that we learn from Joshua's style of leadership and how he rose and how I pray that actually God will raise up leaders in the church. How I pray that God will raise up leaders 
in our environment, in our, in our times, who have the Joshua spirit, that they will be able to lead God's people according to his way. And so um, he was remained focused on God, the one that who is the source of all the wisdom. And of course, other leaders followed the suit, like Solomon, who mentioned that the fear of the Lord, is, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And for him, Joshua remained focused on that. And so I just want to run very quickly into this, some tips that we can pick from Joshua. I've already mentioned some of them, but I realize you and I that need to learn that from Joshua, we can learn our character development, character development. We need, we can develop ourselves. And when you wish and when you desire, put in an effort, whether you're a young man, whether you're a young lady, whether whoever you are, character development. And Joshua became all this, it started from years past. He didn't do, I mean, he did start the thing from nowhere, but he struck a record, shows what it is. So I just want to appeal to you. Character development is good. And so I appeal to you to, you know, to be intentional in your dealings with yourself, but also in your dealings with other people. And then you develop your character from like Joshua, an assistant, into a person who led the people all through into the promised land. And so this is very, very important. So Joshua teaches us how God prepares us to be overcomers. In our generation, in our time, we need overcomers. We need people that actually will travel, will go through, will stand the times, will stand the tests, will stand the trials. And so Joshua gives us this. Like from the beginning, as an assistant, and then he moved on through, he's as one of the spies, he is on the journey 40 years from Egypt to the promised land. And even the promised land, I mean, well, it's, it's so much he's conquering difficult times. But he had been prepared to be an overcomer. And so we also appeal to ourselves, those of us who are above others, to prepare them to be overcomers, even parents, preparing our children how to overcome, how to be positive thinkers, how to be overcomers from the smaller years, children to grow with confidence that they are, can, they are wearable, that they can do something. And so friends, overcomers, Joshua was an overcomer. The reason why his name is Yahweh saves. And then one other thing that actually we learned from him that actually he, he was prepared much before, prepared much before. So that when the time of challenge comes, you are already prepared. Someone told me something about six P's, that prior proper preparation prevents poor performance. And so Joshua was prepared prior. And so we ask ourselves that how often have we prepared ourselves prior in order to be overcomers in the end? Even the preparation to speak like this, there is prior preparation and our biggest, our, you know, our yardstick, you know, uh, preparation is through prayer. You pray to God, you trust him. And so six P's, prior proper preparation prepare, prevents poor performance. And so this one, to overcome challenges, let us do that. And may God bless us as we prepare ourselves. And so one other thing is that Joshua was equipped with the tools. What is of encouragement? culminating into deep trust in God. Now, about Joshua, words of encouragement. And we keep reading those words of encouragement, Joshua chapter 1, verse 6, and then even Deuteronomy chapter 31 that I've just been re that I referred to, you know. And so there are two people here, one that receives words of encouragement, and the first one is the one who speaks them to encourage. And so I just want to ask us that if you are able to offer a word of encouragement, if you're in a position to offer a word of encouragement or even presence of encouragement, do it because the recipient is there. And if you are a recipient of 
the word of encouragement, take it. Joshua gives us the example that actually words of encouragement actually enable us to move higher and better. So Joshua did that. He moved higher and better, getting encouraged all through all the time. And God is speaking to him all through all the time. And we always pray to God that actually the words of encouragement will come away because times are very, very difficult times. And so, so that we can be able to cultivate deep trust in God. Our generation is so bad. And yes, I want to say it again. It's so bad that actually we need to cultivate deep trust in God, but also we need to encourage us that will stand by our way. And Joshua was, shows us an example. And also, uh, God knows what we have been through. Remember, friend, that God knows what we have been through, and he prepared us for what is still to come. And Joshua did that. And so you and I need to learn that actually God knows what we have been through. Yes, yesterday must have been hard. Yesterday must, the other day must have been, but God knows what is lying ahead. And God knew what was lying ahead of life of the life of Joshua. So it is actually very important when you talk about Joshua and God knowing what is behind us and no God knowing what we are going through now and God knows what is coming ahead. And so one thing that you may not know is you may not know what your future holds for you. Like someone said, but I know who holds my future. And this I say, I praise the Lord very much because actually God holds our future like he was holding the future of Joshua to be the leader of God's people. Yes, he holds our future in the name of Jesus Christ. Our future is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Joshua had been a fighter before and his experience proved so. He fought against the Amalekites. He fought against so many tribes and he was the chosen leader. And like we read in Exodus chapter 17, he was one among those that actually fought so much and indeed so much. So in Joshua, we learn, friends, that the main thing is to keep the main thing. The main thing. I found this. It is a, an old um, maxim of leadership that was spoken. And so that, that, let me repeat it, that actually the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. Remaining focused on what is the main and Joshua knew, as we read Joshua 1, 7 to 9 or 6 to 9, actually knew where his encouragement came from. And so this is important, friends, that actually keeping the main thing, keeping focus. And I speak to younger people, remain focused. Old men, remain focused. Married people, remain focused. And keep the main thing, the main thing. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so Joshua exhibited obedience. One that's very important, that even to the point of God, um, you know, uh, making him raise ladders and so friends what are you doing in your life do something during your time joshua did something during his time and i want to end because okay, we could talk and talk and talk and talk but i know there's something that we pick from joshua's life from the few things that i've spoken of course i keep stammering here and there not a good speaker though even the reading sometimes but the point can come out but this is finally Joshua chapter 24, verse uh, 15, a certain portion. This is what I want to end with. That actually, Joshua spoke so many things to the people, spoke to them, spoke to them. And then finally said, now, but you, you can actually, you can decide to do anything else. But as for me and my house, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Listen to me. This is critical at, during our time. The people who are driven by multitudes, the people who are driven by others by waves here and there but you remain standing and saying but as for me and my household we will serve the lord and so for me this one stands out in the life of joshua he spoke it he left it to us as an example it is critical during our time and so it is we need to definitely stand firm given the um, the waves that are coming, drawing people, I mean, sh sh I mean, throwing people left, right. But as for me and my house, you also say, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so this is the final thing that I want to talk about, Joshua. There are lots of lessons that you can pick from this entire book of 24 chapters and you learn more. May God help you. May God stand with you and may God bless you to mention, to proclaim that as for me and my house will serve the Lord. Meaning, actually, move with your children, your parents, move with your parents, your child, but as for me and my house. 
will serve the Lord. May God bless you in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.